All right, so Ben, in this section, we're going to do the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. We're going to look at the four areas that uh, we actually rank. That would be net points. That would be points for, points against, and our friend Todd, turnover differential. All right, so we're going to take a look at each one of those as a standalone statistic. Okay, Ben, so we're going to start off with turnover differential here. And numero uno and turnover differential, the Buffalo Bills with plus 11, only team in double digits at this particular point, and having some contention from the Cowboys where we know five of those seven turnovers. That's, now, this is differential, which is the difference between, you know, uh, uh, turnovers taken and giveaways. So, you know. Yeah, right, so it has something to do with both sides of the ball. It has something to do with both sides of the ball, you know, and these teams are obviously taking it away a lot more than they're giving it away. So your top five, Bills, 11, Cowboys, 7, Saints, 5, Cardinals, 5, and Colts, 4. And these are all in the plus. And again, turnover differential, like net points, is one of those stats where you have both positive and negative numbers. On the total opposite end, you have your Jaguars at number 32 at minus 10. Ben, look who's just above the Jaguars. I spoke on this. The Chiefs, minus and, seven. And again, it's a reflection of both sides of the ball. Their defense is not playing well. They are not getting takeaways. And the offense is getting sloppy with the ball. They have some giveaways. Hence, they are at minus seven. Now, you isn't there a Bears-Packers game this weekend coming up? I don't know. I, I think there is, Packers. and I do see that the Bears, the Packers, and the Buccaneers are all plus three in turnover differential, going six, seven, and eight, respectively. And you've got your Broncos, Chargers, Seahawks at plus two, Rams, Giants, and Eagles all at plus one. Hey, man, you guys are on the plus side. As That's a good my thing. Niners at minus five. That's a good thing. That you don't know how good that is because, because the Giants were plagued with turnovers last year. That was a big deal, especially with Daniel Jones. So to be plus one, that's a big deal for the Giants. That's a big deal. And you've got your Browns, Vikings, and Texans at zero. You know, the Texans, you know, hey, I just give them some respect. To be at turnover differential zero, you know, everything going on with that team. Look at all the teams in the negative. Tied at a negative one, Lions, Raiders, and Ravens. All right. Mm -hmm. Tied at negative mm -hmm. two, Bengals, Dolphins, Steelers, and Panthers. And then tied at negative three, Falcons, Titans, Patriots, and Washington. And only the Jets and the Niners have negative five. We talked about the Chiefs at negative seven and the Jags at negative 10. So there's your turnover differential, ladies and germs. And, and you'll see how much that relates to winning. All right, let's go here. Pause. All right. All right. Points against. Look who's numero uno. The Bills. Why not? Only giving up 64 points. Broncos coming in second, giving up 76. Panthers, 87. That's why I thought the Panthers might beat the Eagles. The Panther defense has been pretty much up there like that, not giving up That's a lot. That's what of I said. I mentioned drinking the Kool-Aid too soon. <laughs> Hey, points are points, man. And they did what they did, you know, give them that respect. 91 get, uh, points given up for the Saints at number four and rounding out top five, the Patriots at 92. So, yeah, that conservative game, if they can continue to play good defense, that conservative game could put them in, con you know, could save their season, put them in contention. You know what I mean? Um, the Bengals. I don't see it. The <laughs> <laughs> The Bengals, the Bears, and Bengals and the Bears at 100 at number seven and eight. At rounding out the top 10, your Vikings giving up 109 and your Steelers 112. So Steelers defense is in the top 10. 
points wise. Yeah, yeah. They mm. haven't given up a whole lot consistently, but uh, that worries me for them as well as the Browns giving up 114 already. <laughs> the no Chargers haven't given up 116 at, along with the Rams. I think as the season goes on, those are two teams that you will see will start to clamp down and start to move up. We shall see. We shall see. Now, the Cowboys, last week I believe they were 16. They're now 14. So they're inching their way up the ladder. They're the right behind being the Chargers. And the Rams. Bad. Right behind the Chargers and the Rams, you will see all three of those teams begin to climb. Cowboys tied with Ravens at 117. Ravens number 15. And my Niners, points against, rounding out the top half, number um, 16 at 119. Now, on the bottom half, you've got some, uh, some big names, some contenders. The Buccaneers, the Packers. I'm still calling the Seahawks a contender. Are you calling the Colts or the Titans contenders? The Colts and the Titans? Yeah. Well, first of all, they're both in the same division, so that makes it tough to call. That would that you'd have to ask me, like, who do I think is going to win the division, the Colts or the Titans? I, I don't even know at this point. The Seahawks, with Russell Wilson being down for at least four weeks, it's tough to call them a contender. I, I one of the one of the one of the teams between the Colts and the Titans is going to come out on top. Yes, which one it is, I don't know. I would lean toward the Titans just because they have Derrick Henry. I, I'm, well, as we look from 25 to 32, I don't think most of these teams are really contenders. Your Giants are going to have to get past the Cowboys, or maybe not. Maybe they, you know, you get two out of the division, so they might still be in it. But I'm not looking for big things from the Texans, Falcons, Jaguars, Dolphins, and the no, Redskins, no. who are next to last place. The only team down there is the one that happens to be in last place which is the chiefs that's the <laughs> last team place from 26 to 32 that has a chance to make the playoffs let alone last be place chiefs giving up the most points in the league bro they can't stop anybody <laughs> they just can't they just don't have it oh man numbers are crazy but again let's give the bills you know what I'm saying? Numero uno. So that's what? Turnover differential, Bill? Number, number one in one? points against. Number one in turnover differential. Wow. That's half that's the formula. Not... That's half the formula for winning the Super Bowl. That's half the formula for winning the Super Bowl. Wait, is this the other half? Look who's number one. Bang. <laughs> Bang. I told you I'm not giving my predictions yet. It's too early. <laughs> it's too early, but this is too easy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is wow. This is wow. Points four. So number one, your top five would be Bills, Cowboys, Bucks, Cardinals, and Chiefs. So they are scoring points. Put up 154, Cardinals 157, Bucks. 167 boys, 170. So here's, here's the problem for the Chiefs, real quick. They keep turning the ball over, and they're not going to be scoring it that much. Because every time you give up a possession, you give up a chance to score. So, so that, that's a bad trend. So true. So true. Six through ten, we have the Chargers, Browns, Rams, Ravens, and Titans. That goes from 142 points, tied with the Browns at the Chargers and Browns at both 142. Uh, Rams at 141, Ravens 136, and Titans 132. So those Titans are hanging in there, number ten, putting up a five more points than the uh, Saints at 127. Washington. Taylor Heineke, number 12, 123 points. That's interesting. That's got to be a skew. They, 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 they handled at least one team. I don't remember what game it was, but they had a really high score. Uh, yeah, they're not. Well, the skew is in number 13. 
They're moving up like a. But we know they have a skew. Washington has one too. I just can't remember what it was. Tied at 120 points for with the Seahawks. Yeah. And there's my Niners at number 15, still hanging in the top half. Go, Niners. And the Panthers at number 16. Now, here you go. Tie in rankings with the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> At 115 and points four. So interesting uh, when you look at these things, especially after they just played and the Eagles uh, went up on them. Hey, Bengals, Raiders, Vikings, Bengals 114, Raiders and Vikings have both put up 113. Colts have put up 108. Uh, we're down the, now to number 22. Falcons, I think the Falcons are finally beginning to figure out how to use their rookie tight end. Well, I mean, the guy got his – this was his first really decent game. I don't I don't know. I don't know what they found out. I, 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 I had actually score. posted that I believe that, and historically they'll say that he had his breakout game. We're talking about Kyle Pitts here. He yes. had his breakout game in London. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> no uh, doubt. We'll, we'll see if it continues. Uh it's nice to have your first breakout game. It's also nice to follow it up with another game and, and put some consistency together as far as production is concerned. That I don't know if that will happen, but I'm, I'm rooting for the guy. <laughs> I think that, you know, he's learning that tight end pro game. So, um, you know, coming in as this hybrid player, you still got, you know, there's still got to learn the positions. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a little bit different at this level. Look who's number 23. The Giants. Giants. Giants at 103, 24, your Broncos, 25, the Lions. Lions scoring more points than the Patriots, Steelers, Jaguars, Texans, Bears, Dolphins, and the Jets. Go ahead, Lions. <laughs> I don't know why I have, I'm so empathetic toward the Lions nowadays. <laughs> I don't either, really, except for the fact that they're the team right now that's doing more with less. We've heard that about the Patriots for years. The Lions right now are doing more with less. They are grinding every little piece of whatever out of their run game to stay competitive because their passing game is basically null and void. So no, it's, and it's void. a tribute to their coaches that they're able to, to scheme up their run game in such a way that they're staying competitive in games and actually putting points on the board. I, I don't know, you know, um, how long this has been going on. I never really looked at it. But if England's going to get the worst teams all the time, they're looking at point differential. Point differential is becoming an international issue when you're looking at a negative 75 and a negative 59 teams playing each other, you know? And the Queen's we, calling Roger Goodell, talking about what the hell? <laughs> we, Can't we, we get the Bucks and the Chargers or the or the, the We've the talked team? about this. We have talked about this. I'm not exactly sure if we just talked amongst ourselves or we actually did it during a show. But I remember talking about this. We didn't bring in the point differentials. But we did say, and I believe it was my, I don't believe, I don't know if I brought it up, but in my mind, the idea was the better teams also had the better fan bases and the worst teams, Jacksonville definitely being one of them, Miami probably close to being one of them. You offend less fans by sending them overseas. You know what I'm saying? You offend less fans. So there's less fans yeah. of these two teams. No, explain that to me again. They don't have great <clears throat> turnouts at their games anyway. Not only are they not playing well, but their fan base isn't turning out very well either. Oh, you're talking so about at home, them, right here on right, the Right, at home, right. Right. So if you send them overseas, it's not that big a deal. There's not going to be a big, huge outcry from their fan base about why you got to send us over there. That's one less oh, game we get to okay. see. Okay, now I'm getting you. Now I'm getting right. you. 
you got people over there wearing wearing Jets <laughs> gear <laughs> to the game, and I don't really know if they know <laughs> that much about the Jets. But yeah, that's who they, I'm sure that's they, who they jumped on that bandwagon and they're rolling with them. Some of them could be ex-New Yorkers. <clears throat> Some of them might have traveled over. Some of them might have been there already on vacation. <laughs> and some of them might have just picked the team to get their gear to wear to the game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but I think, I think at least in England, and I know for sure in Mexico, or do they have a game schedule for Mexico? They should. I got to check. That's a good question. Okay. They usually do. I'm sure that over these last few years, there's a lot of fans over there that are quite aware of who's good and who's not. Okay, so the whole thing with Queens going, going, what the hell? She might not be making a call, but somebody over there is like, really, <laughs> really, y'all? Jacksonville might come on, bro. Why don't you send the bills over? Well, you know, the, the NFL has a whole educational thing now, you know, over in England and internationally. So, yeah. you know, you can't they fool know. them anymore. You've educated them. Once you educate them, you can't them. fool them anymore. You can't fool them anymore. So it all <laughs> comes down to money as usual. Mm. <laughs> it all comes down to money. Who, who are we not going to lose any TV money to? The Dolphins, Jacksonville, Atlanta. We're not going to lose no TV money. We're not going to lose no funds in the stadium. Nobody cares if they come on at nine o'clock in the morning because I don't have none of them on my fantasy teams. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Now I need the true 100% net point power rankings. I got my pen out. I'm taking notes. All right, Benny, let's take a look at the net point differential. And as I said, this is the one stat, or this is the other stat beside turnover differential, where you have both a positive and a negative. Benny, look who is number one. Yes. That have makes it ever, cool, that makes you a clean ever sweep, right? Say that again. It's a clean sweep. They're number one in every category. Have you remember seeing that at all? Oh, geez. Not off the top of my head. I, I don't can't ever remember this happened. happening. A clean sweep across all categories, net points, points for, yeah. points against, and turnover differential? I have to believe that since we've been doing this, at least for one stinking week in one season, somebody was number one in every category. I got to believe that. But I, I can go back. not remember I have this track personally back to about 2015. Okay. You know, and I have to go back and look, but I can't remember. I'm sitting here looking like this is a first. <laughs> this it is, could be. It this could is be. a first. And look how far ahead of number two they are. What's that? 46 points wow. between the Bills and the Cardinals? That's crazy. And then the Cardinals is, is, is getting it in, no doubt about it. But, again, my Niners held them down a little bit. Cowboys coming in third with 53 points, ahead of the Buccaneers at number four, 45 points, and rounding out number five. What is with the Saints, 36 points? I mean, I guess the skew is in with the Saints. They had such a great first game. But they haven't played exactly bad, but they haven't played exactly great since then. They haven't been blown out that I can remember, and they've put up good numbers every week, just about. They're, they're just kind of floating. Yeah, it's a real hard team to put your finger on. Michael Thomas will be back in another week or two. We might see some changes. Number six and number seven, the Panthers and the Browns are, are both tied at plus 28 net points. The Chargers and the Broncos are both tied at plus 26 net points. And rounding out the top 10, the Rams at plus 25. So there's your top 10 in terms of net points. You did say that you looked at some of the other rankings. Yes. Do you have a top uh, 10 in front of you? Uh, yes, I do. And I'll tell you. <laughs> 
this is uh, pretty interesting here. Now, I would have to venture to guess that things may have changed from the time I took these rankings down, which was pre-week five, as opposed to now that week five is over, okay? But just to give everybody out there a little idea, and I'll, I'll check it again uh, when the show comes back on again for this upcoming week. But just before week five started and the games were actually played, the NFL Network Power Rankings had the Cardinals at number one, the Buccaneers at two, and the Bills at three. So of those three teams, only one, the Cardinals, made it into our top three. Just to give you some perspective. They had number four, Packers, five, Ravens, six, Cowboys. We've got the Cowboys all the way up at three. Bucks at four. And Saints at five. Now, be, without going through this whole thing, they did not have the Saints in their top 16. Okay? There's a lot of opinion and conjecture mixed in there. We just do the numbers. And we're not saying our numbers say that the Saints are the fifth best team in the league. We're just saying you are what the numbers say you are, basically. And things can fluctuate. Um, everybody else in their top 16 is pretty much in our top 16, except as I look very quickly, they still have the Seahawks sitting at number 12 and the Bengals at 15. We have the Bengals at 12 and we don't have the Seahawks at all. Okay. Everything else, although the numbers don't match up exactly, their top teams are basically our top teams. Okay. All right. So All right. I, I just found that very interesting. They use Cynthia Freeland's algorithms and like I said, opinion, conjecture, and all kind of other stuff. We just use our system and our system, as far as I'm concerned, ranks right up there with any other system that anybody else out there is using. We and, and we normally see our Super Bowl contender come out of the top eight. Yes. Somewhere in that top eight, you see your Super yes. Bowl contender. So keep a close eye on that, ladies and germs. Those are your net points through week five of the 2021 season. This is really closer than I thought it was. This is crazy. <laughs> this is this is this is funny. They got the Rams at nine, we got them at 10. They got the Browns at 10. We got them at seven. This is really close. They got the Chargers at seven. We got them at eight. This is super close. Very close. Very close. Just based on the numbers. Just based on the numbers. So they can do all the formulas they want, and they're still riding our coattails like, ah. Pretty good, man. Pretty good. You are what you scored. Yep. You are what you scored. No doubt about it. All right. There you go. That wraps up the Sterling Pro Football Net Point Power Rankings. Be sure to visit us on Facebook and on Twitter. That's both the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and Ben and Barry on football to get this information. Mm -hmm.